Now before I start talking about type 1 and type 2 errors, I quickly want to go over my example from the last lecture about null and alternative hypotheses. So, School District A states that its high schools have an 85% passage rate on the high school exit exam. A new school was recently opened in the district, and it was found that a sample of 150 students had a passage rate of 88%, with a standard deviation of 4%. Does this new school have a different passage rate than the rest of School District A? So in this example, the null hypothesis, or basically the assumption we're starting with, is that the mean will be equal to 85%. Now the alternative hypothesis, or the, the claim that we're testing, is that the mean is going to be different than 85%. So now I'm going to add something. I'm going to say, answer this question using an alpha level of 0 0.05. So this is kind of what the normal distribution looks like when you have an alpha of 0 0.05. See that my alpha of 0 0.05, or 5%, is split equally into two tails. You can have one-tailed and two-tailed tests. I'll talk about that in a future lecture, but here we have a two-tailed test where the alpha is split into two. We have 2.5% and 2.5%. And in the middle, I have what's left over, 95%. If you add those three numbers up, you have 2.5 plus 95 plus 2.5, you get 100%. So you can see that we've accounted for all possible outcomes. Now, if the statistic that we calculate, like for example a Z or a T, is within that 95% range, we can conclude that what we're testing, usually the mean, is right where we expect it to be. And so we will retain or keep the null hypothesis. The mean is right where we assumed it would be, so we're going to stick with our initial assumption. Now, if the statistic we calculate is outside of that 95% range, we will conclude that what we're testing is not where we expect it to be. And so it's very likely that the null hypothesis is not true. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis and say that the alternative hypothesis is true. Basically, we're going to say, okay, the mean is in this area, and it's so unlikely for the mean to show up here that it's probably here because it is different from the null hypothesis. It's different from what we assumed it would be. So we can conclude that the alternative hypothesis is probably true. It's probably different. So we have the hypotheses here. And now, in reality, the school we sampled from either has a passage rate of 85%, which is our null hypothesis, or it has something different than 85%, which is our alternative hypothesis. So we haven't measured the entire school. We only measured a sample of students. The decision that we make will be based on the characteristics of the sample we've taken and what we know about the probabilities associated with the normal curve. Because statistics don't always accurately reflect the values of parameters, the decision we make may or may not accurately reflect what's real, may not accurately reflect reality. So in reality, the null hypothesis is either true or false. And we're going to make a decision about whether that null hypothesis is true or false. So we could be right, we could be wrong. There are four possible things that could happen. Outcome one is that we reject the null hypothesis when in reality it is false. So what's that, say what's that saying is, is that we reject the null hypothesis when we're supposed to. That's good. Outcome number two is that we reject the null hypothesis when in reality it is true. So what we're saying is we're saying the null hypothesis is false when actually in real life it was true. That means we made a mistake and that mistake is called a type one error. The third outcome is that we retain the null hypothesis when in reality it is false. So we're saying, okay, we found it to be true, but actually in real life it was false. That's also a mistake, and that mistake is called a type 2 error. And the final outcome is that we retain the null hypothesis when in reality it is true. So really we say the null hypothesis is true when it actually is in reality. So that's another good thing. So there are two good outcomes, and then there's the type 1 error which is rejecting when you shouldn't, and the type 2 error, which is not rejecting when you should. Those are the two mistakes. So those are type 1 and type 2 errors and what it means to make them.